living 11,000 feet above sea level in the Tibetan highlands of Sichuan, China, are the people of Zamtang County. Dating back to the 18th century, Tibetan Buddhists of the Jonang school have inhabited this land. Here, Buddhist values are at the core of the people's way of life. While small in size, Zamtang is deeply rooted in tradition, and cultural heritage is its source of pride. As economic development in the past two decades began to take a toll on the people's way of life, Jamyang Lodro Rinpoche established the Jonang Tangka School. As the spiritual leader of the Jonang school and the Zamtang people, Jamyang Rinpoche teaches Tangka scroll painting and the philosophy of Tibetan Buddhism. This young boy's parents are Tanka artists. He will grow up surrounded by kinsmen who know their history and value their culture. But what will children in coming generations face as formerly pristine Zamtang opens up to tourism? Tanka while emphasizing the importance of tradition, Jam Yang Rinpoche guides his students to consider perspectives beyond those of Zamtang. Tanka is an art form that requires extraordinary concentration, attention to detail, and passion. Yet most of the graduates of the Tanka school were once nomads without formal education. <laughs> Merely defining Tanka as an art form is an understatement. It's also a guiding tool to help the artists develop spirituality, wisdom, and compassion. <laughs> In essence, the Tanka artist and the painting become one. Actually, Tangan
The people of Zamtang live by two principal tenets of Buddhism, that all sentient beings are precious, and greed is the source of all misery. They live with nature, not against it, and they live in temperance. So the Actually,我们的生活中 Perhaps the sense of tranquility emerging from the people of Zamtang has something to do with their relationship to nature. To the eyes of an outsider, the spirituality that permeates the entire community is easily the jewel of Zamtang. But the question is, what choice will the people of Zamtang make between cultural preservation and economic progress? And can the two coexist in modern society?